Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GetMeTheGeek.com and today we're going to have another PFSense tutorial. Today we're going to walk through the web interface, give you a general overview of everything that's in there. Uh, there's a lot to go over, uh, so we're not going to touch on everything, but we're going to go through the basics. Let's get started. All right, here we go. So first off, when you log into your PFSense, you're going to present it with the dashboard. Uh, if you take a look at our last video, we showed you the dashboard real quick. I'm just going to go quickly over again. On the left hand side, you're going to have your system information and then you will have all the other things that you can add here. Now these are movable, so you can move them around any way you like and rearrange them. And if you want more, if you hit the plus sign up here, there are a plethora of items you can install here. First off. Um, I put in the smart, so if you're running an SSD or hard drive on this, then I highly recommend you having the smart status on there. That way you can tell if your drive is good off the bat. First, let's look at the interface. One thing is, is anytime you want to get back to the dashboard, you can go over here and click on this Community Edition PFSense. You might have something, it might not say Community Edition, might say if you're running on the actual NetGate hardware, it will say something else possibly. So if you installed it yourself, this happens to actually be NetGate hardware, uh, but it's the older APU unit. So it's still, and I did a fresh install, so it still says, so it says community edition. So let me just uh, zoom in a little bit on this guy and make it a little bit bigger for everybody to see. Um, first up is our menu for system under the systems menu you have advanced cert manager general setup high availability logging out packet manager routing setup wizard update and user manager so if you're setting it up for the first time you will be presented with the setup use wizard if for some reason you click around and you've lost that this is where you find it to get it running again now cert manager is going to be one that you may use if you're going to set up, say, an open VPN server on here. This is where you'll do your certificate authorities and your certificates for your open VPN. We will cover that probably in another video, so check out my open VPN PFSense video coming soon. Now, under the general setup, this is where you're going to find the host name, the domain, DNS servers, and all these things uh, where you want to set up the time zones and several of these things you went through in the wizard it fills out in here so we're in the general setup now if you go into the advanced setup there are some interesting stuff here and here for example if you want to change how your web is talking to HTTP HTTPS if you want to specify a different port to log in on your firewalls if you don't want to use HTTPS you can uh, 443 you can set your own custom port and all of it goes through here HSTS so you could set that excuse me and several other things that you can go through here <clears throat> firewall net there's some some different things you can set up for here like for example this firewall optimizations um, you can change that if you're doing VoIP, sometimes you want to change this to conservative. Uh, networking, so you have options here. Generally speaking, most of the things in all of this are not something that you're going to be into on a regular basis. Package manager, however, package manager is something that you may be interested in doing. And I guarantee if you're going to do like open VPN, you're going to definitely want to install at least one package from here. So first up, you will see packages that are installed. In this particular case, I don't have any installed. Available. And we're gonna go through the availables and I'm, I'm gonna look at a couple of point out or a couple of them that you may be interested in. First off is if you type in open and you search, you're gonna find open VPN client export. That's an important one to install if you set up OpenVPN because it will help you configure your clients. And then also, uh, Suricata is an intrusion detection 
intrusion prevention security monitor. So that is a good one that you may be interested in using. Or you may have heard of Snort. Snort is another one that you may be interested in using. But if you just scroll down this list, you will see there are a whole bunch of things in here that may be interesting to you. Um, as we scroll down here, one that I mentioned, HA Proxy, is an interesting one that may be of use. And also, also, PF Blocker NG. That's one that is definitely one that may be interesting too. So, uh, like I said, go through these, look at them, squid, squid guard, some of these are traffic shaping uh, type of things. There are lots of packages here. So next thing you want to do is let's go take a this look at the update. So if you click the update, this is where you're going to set number one, the branch that you're installing on this device and be able to check for updates and everything. So if you look at this branch, if I pop down here, you can see that there's the previous stable version, the next stable version, the latest stable snapshots, experimental, the latest stable version. So this is where you can change the trade. If you want to try out that new 2.5 version that's coming out, you can switch to that right here. So generally speaking, you want to leave it on the, the stable branch unless you're experimenting updates. Now, that brings me to the point of when you're at the dashboard, you will see right here, the system is on the latest version. It will say, hey, there's an update if there is a new version. So check that out. That's how you, when you log in, you can tell really easy if there's an update. All right, moving on down to user managers. This is where you can add users. Uh, this is important if you have users, other users that want to log into the machine. If you're doing VPNs and you want to have local users that have VPN logins here. Um, moving on to the next thing is interfaces. Now, interface assignments is gonna have a whole bunch of stuff like this. In your basic configuration here, we're gonna have the WAN and the LAN, and you pick which port on your device is those. And then in this particular case, you'll see there's this extra one. So I can add the extra one and it'll be an opt interface. So if I go ahead and just put zero, put that there, you'll see that's opt one. So now I can use that third interface on this device to plug in maybe a DMZ network, or if I just want to completely segment it off via the firewall. firewall. Moving down, each one that you have will show up in here and in the WAN. So this is where you will configure your WAN interface, um, where you enable it, give it a name, because you can name it whatever you like, uh, what the interface type is, the IPv6, and so on and so forth. Generally, you would have probably done this, the basic setup on the wizard when you set it up in the first place. Also, if you move on down to the next one, you will get to the LAN. And this you would also have done during the wizard, and this is your basic LAN setup. In this particular case, you know it's called LAN, it's enabled, it's IPv4, and, and then you can set, okay, so it's a static IP address of 192.168.1.1, which is the IP address of this firewall, and it's a slash 24 okay and of course now opt one which is the one we just went ahead and enabled here click on it you'll notice it's not enabled so you'd have to enable it you can get we can go enabled we can call it whatever we like go down uh, change this to a static IP address and that'll give you whatever IP address schema you want okay now Here's the, the menu you're probably going to end up using the most. So firewall. Let's look at NAT rules. So port forwarding. So if you need to set up a port forward. So for example, if you have a web server behind your firewall or an FTP server or some other service, this is where you're going to do that. You're going to add a new uh, NAT port forward in here and what happens is you'll do set this up and it will also create a firewall rule so that's the port forward one-to-one -one NATs 
and that way if you wanted a map one-to-one -one map netting net so if you had to say you had multiple IP addresses you can map a public IP address to a private IP address directly outbound nets and this um, normally will be set on automatic but you might want to be interested in the hybrid outbound which will let you go ahead and when set up a device when it talks to the internet to present as one of your other IPs other than the WAN IP address if you have multiple static IP addresses. Lots of interesting things you can do with that. Now down to the rules. So the first off we're not going to talk about floating rules for a moment but we're going to talk about the WAN rules. This is basically if you remember in the wizard when we checked a couple boxes it says blocking private networks and stuff like that. This is the rules set in here. Now when I go over to the land side, this is where it gets interesting. Number one, this first rule is called an anti-lockout rule. And basically what that does is that on the land side, it, it makes sure that you have access to the PFSense firewall using the web login. And then the second thing we have is an IPv4 and an IPv6 allow all rule. And so that basically what this does is says, okay, so if I'm connected to the LAN, then I am able to talk to anybody outside of her. And that's what these rules set up. Now, we will go over uh, firewall rules and port forwarding more in another video. Now, schedules. Not really much to say there, traffic shaper. There is a traffic shaper. You can go through a wizard to set up a traffic shaper uh, if you need to basically set up uh, QoS type of stuff. Services. Okay, so this is the other menu you're going to get really used to. So number one, there's an auto backup configure, so you can set that up to back up your PFSense config on a regular basis. DHCP server. So when you click that, this is your normal IPv DHCP server, and it's going to have anything that you have set up as a DHCP. So in this particular case, I have LAN, and DHCP is enabled. That means that anything that's plugged into this LAN port, via the switch or whatever, will get an IP address using this DHCP server. And this is how it's configured. Subnet, subnet mask, and the range. So you can go down here and specify certain DNS servers. Otherwise, it will just hand out the default, which is this firewall as the D DNS server. Gateway stuff, lots of things that you can override if necessary. But as you can see here, there, all of these are set at the basic defaults, and my PC is connected to this right now. Now, DHCP6. If you're doing IPv6, it's essentially the same as your IPv4, IPv4 version of THCP server. Um, he, there are a lot of things in here. Most of these things you won't have to do anything with. However, I will say that if you are running your PFSense at home and you do not have a static IP address, Dynamic DNS is a great way for you to set a DNS entry for your server. So anytime that your public IP address changes, the dynamic DNS will update the DNS entry and help you point it to it. So if you have a port forward to a web server and you don't have a static IP address, this is your solution. Now, there are quite a few vendors that they support under service type. So here, here is the list, and as you can see, this is a pretty good sized list. So you should be able to find one that meets your needs. Now, let's go ahead and look at VPN. You got IPsec, L L2TP, and OpenVPN. OpenVPN is the one that I typically use because I'm a big fan of it, and it is great for um, having a, a PFSense at home and being able, wanting to be able to connect your satellite, your mobile users to it and set it up. So, and there's a wizard, which is wonderful, that will walk you through setting up the VPN. 
and it does a great job of it. Now, over here in the status is some important stuff. Number one, there's another place that you can get to the dashboard. Click on that, and boom, we're back at the dashboard. Number two, DHCP leases. So if you click on that, you're gonna see DHCP, and you'll see I have one PC connected to this network. We'll blur that up. And so if you need to know all the DHCP leases, that's where you find them. Gateways. So as you'll see, gateway right here is the DHCP one that I have set up. Take a look at it. Use traffic graphs, traffic graphs in eight ones. If you wanted to take a look at your bandwidth, kind of like you have on the dashboard, but this is a different interface that gives you a little bit of flexibility in how you want it to look. And yeah, system logs. That's a great place for great place to go for stuff. Diagnostics. So say you want to do a DNS lookup or you need to, to ping uh, something, you can do that from here. Trace route, things like that. And then of course, you can go to the help. Let's give you a help desk, all these things you can go for. And NetGate does have paid support. So you can, you can get paid for support, go to there, pay them for incident response, all that good stuff. Or you could pay a company like mine to do the management of your PFSense firewall for you so that uh, we would just take care of that type of stuff. That's one of the things we do. All right. There you have it. That is the basic overview of PFSense web interface. I know that was really quick and we didn't go into very much detail, but we did go over the basics. In our follow-up videos, we're gonna go deep dive into some of these things like setting up an open VPN or setting, actually setting up some port forwarding and things like that. So stay tuned for our next video in this series where we'll go more in depth and talk about PFSense. I'm Kevin Stevenson with Get Me The Geek. Thanks for joining me.